creepy primary school teacher. When I was in grade six, I think I was 11 at the time, I briefly went to a school in a town we had just moved to and lived in for only a few months. My normal grade six teacher didn't like me very much because I used to chat in class and she would often send me to the grade two class to do my work. The grade two teacher, an old man who will call Mr. Jackson, was always super nice to me, but weirdly nice and on recess and lunch would loiter around where me and my friends would sit. Anyways, one day this guy added me on MSN and we started talking every day. He said he was 16 and lived only a few hours away in the next big city. It was so long ago now that I can't remember where he said he got my email address from, but I was young and stupid, so probably thought nothing of it at the time. We still spoke for a couple of years, even after I had moved to the other side of the country. There were many times he would talk about sexual things, and I would just brush it off because I didn't really understand that sort of stuff. Until one day when I was 15, he sent me a message saying that he heard that my favorite teacher from my old school, Mr. Jackson, was sick. I only went to that school for a term, and I had definitely never mentioned any teacher's names or even what school it was that I went to. It was then I realized that the guy who I had been talking to for years was this old man who had most likely gotten my email address from snooping around and reading notes between friends and I, or eavesdropping when he was always hanging around. This was about 11 years ago now, so I don't even know if he's still alive or not anymore. But if he is, I hope he's not still teaching, and definitely let's not meet again. Send nudes now. A few years ago, a random guy contacted me on Instagram. The guy was nice enough, and eventually he sent me his number. We started talking on the phone, but from the get-go he seemed a little off. He started getting angry if I didn't pick up the phone. Eventually, I blocked him. But suddenly, I'd be getting calls from a different number. It was always him. I blocked around four numbers before the calls stopped. Then, a few months later, he messaged me on Instagram from a new account. In the message, he basically stated that either I send him nude images of myself with slut written all over my body, or he would send my nudes to my family, work, and friends. I didn't understand what he meant by saying he'd send my nudes, because I knew he didn't have any of me. I ignored the message. An hour later he sent me an image. He had found a girl who looked very similar to me, and honestly it was just because I knew I never took any pictures that the woman was definitely not me. 
I reverse image searched the photo and found the actual woman in the pictures, but still I was scared. He could send out this woman's image and say it's me. And while I could message everyone and let them know it isn't me, I'm 100% sure not everyone would believe me and think I'm covering up the fact that I sent images to strangers online. My family is pretty conservative at best. I go onto this man's profile and I remember a cold sweat coming over me as I saw that the people he followed were all the people I follow. Basically everyone I know. I didn't know what to do except message the guy back with a threat to go to the police. He deleted the messages he sent to me, and I deleted my Instagram account and instead began using my personal account which is now set to private. On my account, I also blocked the man's profile. I just hope he never finds me again. Internet is a dangerous place. Creepy Internet Nude Hunter. Let's not meet again. X's ex found me. Me and my ex broke up about a year ago, and it got very messy. I was receiving DMs, texts, and Snapchats from what seemed like everyone from her hometown. I got everything from calling me names to death threats. I ended up having to block about 10 people from three different sources of social media, but that's besides the point. The worst threats I received was from her recent ex. One read, Oh, you hurt my girl? It's over for you. I know what town you live in. I will find you, and when I do, even your parents won't be able to recognize your body. He also sent me several others, explaining the ways he would torture me. I just ended up blocking him, along with everyone else, and moved on with my life. Well, today getting close to our one year of breaking up, me and my ex have started to talk again on okay terms, and everything seemed fine. I go about my day and walk over to this popular deli to grab a bite to eat. I end up passing a friend of mine along the way. They shout my name from across the street and head over. We talk for a bit and split ways as I head over to the deli. This is when I was approached by three taller guys. My fucking stomach hit the ground when I saw the guy's face. It was the ex-boyfriend. I knew instantly from having to stare at his profile picture. And he brought friends. He found me. He quickly grabbed my shoulder tightly and looked me in the eyes. I stared back into his and they seemed full of rage and insanity. I finally found you, he said, in probably the most calm voice he continued to whisper. You know what I have to do to you now. I am a man of my word. Every inch on my goddamn body began to crawl. Fight or flight was kicking in, and time fell on slow mo. My brain is running a million miles per hour. Three versus one. Okay, this isn't good, but they can't just kill me here in broad daylight. 
Do they have a car? Oh God, are they going to kidnap me first? I started to look around for an exit. He then tightened his grip and said, Nobody is going to save you. That's when I booked it full pedal to the metal. I knocked his grip off of me and watch as three guys tried to grab me, but I was already gone. I ran as fast as I could. Thankfully, I know the area pretty well, so I took off towards the direction of my friend's apartment. They chased after me, screaming full-blown battle cries. I turned the corner, and by the luck of a million gods, Somebody was exiting my friend's apartment building, which had a locked from the outside gate. I dashed in and slammed the gate behind me. I watched for about five minutes as they searched the nearby area for me, checking in and behind dumpsters. These guys were serious. I feel lucky to even be telling this event right now. This is one crazy motherfucker I hope I never meet again. Are you awake, baby girl? Due to my engagement ending, I had to move back in with my alcoholic dad while I saved up to get my own apartment somewhere. My dad and I had a fight, so I decided to go stay at my friend's house that night because I needed a break from the drunken shenanigans at my house. I've known this friend since middle school, but she's always had questionable taste in guys. I figured everything was fine though, since she and her boyfriend have an infant son together. Her boyfriend went out that night with his friends, and my friend and I hung out and played with her son and dog until 11 when we decided to go to sleep. She showed me to the guest room and then went to her room to sleep with the baby. At around 2 a.m., her boyfriend comes home with some friends. I hear them moving around outside my door, and they weren't acting like typical drunk people, so I opened my door a crack and peeped outside. They were shooting up heroin, and by the looks on their faces, they were already pretty tweaked out. My friend's apartment is a 200-year-old house converted into two apartments, so there were no locks on the doors unless you had a skeleton key. My friend has insomnia since her baby is pretty colicky, and they had just gotten to sleep, so I didn't want to wake her. Plus, I'd have to go past the tweakers to get to her. So I decided to just try to sleep and hope they'd leave us be. About five minutes later, my door opens and light spills in. These two guys are staring at me from the doorway, giggling. Are you awake, baby girl? They asked, and I laid still and tried to keep my breathing slow and even so I'd look asleep. Then someone says something from a different room, so the tweakers leave my doorway to go talk to whoever said something. I quickly shut the door and got an Uber. I climbed out the bedroom window which was luckily broken and quite easy to get out of. Then I went to my friend's bedroom and knocked on her window and told her what was going on so she and the baby could leave with me. 
My friend packed a bag and sent the baby with me, but decided to stay home to make sure her boyfriend didn't do anything stupid. The next morning, she told me she had to call the cops on the tweaker's friends because she caught them trying to steal out of her son's piggy bank and they wouldn't leave. So, creepy tweakers, let's not meet. My first college professor. When I started college, my university gave me a list of writing classes that were required for freshmen. I didn't get my first choice, but I was intrigued when I got placed in a writing class based on human and civil rights. It was a great class and I learned a lot, and met Chloe, a girl I now consider to be my soul sister. My professor didn't seem too odd at first. He kind of had that hippie vibe to him, and was very passionate about human and civil rights. He was also head of the political science department at the university. When we first got together, he boasted about how excited he was to have a class that consisted of all women. I didn't find it inherently off-putting. I thought it was cool that he was excited, but my friend and I later analyzed a lot of the things he said and did in a different way. As time went on, I got closer to Chloe. Her and I would get coffee and discuss the reading material frequently, which eventually branched out to partying and hanging out as well. She used to joke that our professor liked us the most because we were the loudmouths of the class in the sense that we were always the ones talking during discussions. That combined with him praising our 100% female class were not huge red flags for me at the time. The largest event that kind of bothers me now is the trip up to his cabin in the mountains. He had asked us to accompany him as a class to his cabin almost an hour and a half away from the university in the mountains. We thought it was a bit odd, some of us at least. He brought food up and I cooked us a large lunch and it was actually kind of nice to just have a candid conversation with the girls. And my professor brought his wife so it didn't seem that weird. However, he remained kind of touchy with us, nothing major just resting hands on our shoulders while talking to us or trying to get by us. I ended the semester and left that university after finals. I realized that my university didn't have the program I wanted, so I transferred my credits and started going to another school. My friend was dismayed, but we still hung out and did our work together and she even took another class with him. She said she took him on as an academic advisor and worked more closely with him. Again, no immediate red flags from her. That was until she texted me one day, asking if I'd heard the news about him. Since I didn't go there anymore, I was amazingly unaware. Our professor had been forced to resign, and it was in the local news as the university was getting ripped to shreds for handling the situation so poorly. Apparently, there was a convention or event, and the school's political science department went. The president was a female, 
and I guess he had asked her to meet him at his hotel room to discuss the next day's itinerary. When she showed up, he apparently was not fully dressed and invited her to wait while he finished getting ready for dinner. She hesitantly agreed, and as he dressed, he apparently told her that he loved her in the same way he loved his wife and wanted to be with them both because she was his soulmate. I'm not sure if his wife was in on it or what, but the student immediately reported the incident. Unfortunately, the university offered her a sabbatical, basically asking her to leave the university. Apparently, the professor didn't even deny his behavior in a hearing with university officials. My friend and I got together and suddenly all of his private meetings with her and I, inviting a group of girls to his cabin in the mountains, seemed a bit off-putting. I've always found myself to be a very paranoid person, and as I got older I tried to shed those thinking habits, but now I wish I'd paid more attention and maybe been able to intervene and say something before this poor girl was essentially booted out of school in order to protect its reputation.